Holly Commons, people. Thank you so much. I think actually we have a, we have a small problem because um, I'm here to talk about the importance of fun, and this is the joy of coding. So this is the perfect conference for this talk, but I'm so depressed, and I think you're probably all really depressed as well. Um, so I feel a bit silly talking about fun now, but but hopefully we'll get there. So first things first. First things second. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, why is there a duck on the title slide? Well, there's a really good answer for that, which is science. It turns out that fun is very well studied. And there are journals about humor. And there are papers about hybrid humor as a cultural translation, the example of bare humor. And there's function of face gestures and head movements and spontaneous humorous communication. And we can go on. We could, get, we could do so much academic research about humor. Um, but we're not going to do that because we don't want to for, for reasons. Um, instead, we're going to look at a slightly more accessible study, which is a couple of years ago they tried to look at how, how humor worked, how humor varied across countries. And so they did a huge experiment where they got people to, to rank jokes. And one of the things that they were able to do as well was they were able to take the same joke and change the animal in it and see whether it became funny or not. And it turns out, it is scientifically proven that if you have a duck in a joke, the joke becomes funnier. Um, it also, interestingly, there's a couple of reasons for this. I think this is partly because ducks go quack, and that's funny, and ducks are just funny. Um, it is also because, at least in the English language, the letter K also makes things funnier. So if you have a word with a lot of Ks in it, like quack or duck, it becomes funny. Um, so I looked to find the funniest joke in the Netherlands. I couldn't actually find it. They just highlighted a few. Um, but I have the funniest joke in Belgium, which is just one country over. Um, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> um, and the joke is, why do ducks have webbed feet? And the answer is, to stamp out fires. But we go on. Why do elephants have flat feet? to stamp out burning ducks. <laughs> and because this is 2023, and we are living in the golden age of computers, I can do this, which is completely gratuitous, and show you a burning duck. But of course, <laughs> this is a technology conference. Um, this is not a duck conference. Um, so let's, let's move on from the ducks um, and, and talk about fun, which is slightly more related to technology. Um, but before we do that, I want to get over a little bit of imposter syndrome, which is why am I qualified to talk about fun in the workplace? I'm a software engineer. Well, I'm Holly Cummins. Um, I work for Red Hat at the moment, but I worked for 20 years for IBM. And I did a number of things at, at IBM, but one of the things I did was I was a consultant. And I feel slightly embarrassed to say this after Mark's talk this morning. Um, but I would like to make it clear I was not one of those consultants. That was a different organization. Um, we sort of looked across the wall at those, that organization and said, you're doing things for reasons. And I know what those reasons are, but I'm glad I'm not in that organization. I was in an organization called the Blue Mix Garage. And we had a method. Um, it was based on extreme programming and lean. And one of the things in our method was the, a fun work environment. It was a formal part of our methodology. We were obliged to have fun at work. Um, so I no longer work in that organization. That organization actually no longer exists, which is sad. Um, but I work for Red Hat. I'm a software engineer. I help build Quarkus. And with Quarkus, what we say is, People come to Quarkus, they, they move to Quarkus for the performance benefits and the cost savings that come with those performance benefits. But they stay for the developer experience. Because one of our foundations for Quarkus is developer joy. We want people to have fun using Quarkus, and we build it to try and ensure that people have fun. So that's kind of cool, because it means part of my job is to make people have fun or design Quarkus so that people can have fun. I don't actually try and make people have fun with Quarkus by like standing over them and going, are you having fun yet? 
better have fun, otherwise there's going to be consequences. So, ducks. But let's talk about, instead of talking about ducks or me, um, let's talk about you and, and your career. Because I, when, I, when I give this talk, I always wonder whether anybody's actually going to admit to having gone to my talk. And of course, here we're at Joy of Coding, so actually I can extend that worry to is anybody even going to admit to having gone to Joy of Coding? Because it can be kind of an awkward conversation with your colleagues, and, and you, know, you, you say, yeah, boss, Joy of Coding was great. It was a very serious conference, and there was no pink octopuses, and I, you know, and I definitely didn't attend to talk about fun. Um, by the way, did you know that ducks are really quite funny? Like, it's just not a conversation that feels professional or appropriate. We want to show that, we, you know, we're at a conference and oh, it was very serious and I, I learned a lot and yeah, you know, definitely, definitely, you know, there was no entertainment at, at all. And this extends, you know, all the way through what we do. So if you look, for example, at how we present ourselves on LinkedIn, you see their specialty, having fun at work. This is not my LinkedIn profile. I am not brave enough to do that. I suspect none of you are brave enough to do that. Instead, I, you know, I say very serious things about you know, how I'm professional and qualified. And, and we do this everywhere. So if, if, for example, we're writing a cover letter, there's a bunch of words that we want to put on that cover letter to make ourselves seem knowledgeable and enthusiastic and with drive. And we say, you know, I, was, I initiated this and I planned this. And nowhere on there, <laughs> you know, if on a cover letter, we would never say, I am fun loving. I am the life of the office. You know, it's just, it feels so wrong to do that. And even if maybe we secretly hope that we have fun at work, we keep it a secret. We don't, we don't talk about it. Fun is the sort of, you know, like maybe, oh, it's a side effect that, you know, we kind of hope happens, but we're definitely not going to mention it. And I was thinking about the reason for this, and I think there's actually really deep-seated cultural reasons for this. Um, and if you, if you would like to go, you know, if you're sort of inspired by Bourdieu and you want to go, go deeper into it, um, I'd recommend reading Polanyi. And, and he talks about some of the sort of the, the cultural changes in Europe and, and the effects of them. And one of them was the switch to Protestantism. And so this is a picture of the Puritans in Britain. And one of their, their big things was, you, it is morally wrong to have fun. You cannot have fun. And if you have fun, you will not go to heaven. And I think probably very few of us would actually say that. Um, probably particularly few of us at a conference called The Joy of Coding. But I think a lot of us still deep, 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 somewhere we have this layer that still believes that Fun, having fun makes us kind of a bad person. I should add as well that the, the Puritans quite famously tried to cancel Christmas 400 years ago. And the reason they tried to cancel Christmas was because Christmas was too f much fun. So, there we go. So what, what is this fun thing <laughs> that's, that's so terrible that makes us feel like we're bad people if we have it? I think it's actually, I've sort of, we talk about fun, we talk about joy, but I think we can find a few things that are sort of part of a broad, a broad spectrum of fun. One of them is exploration. So sort of interacting with the world. Another one is a puzzle. So exploration has no goal and no rules. A puzzle has a goal and rules. Again, play plays quite unstructured. Play m probably has rules, but it doesn't have a goal. But then we have games. Games, a bit like a puzzle, they have rules, they have a goal, but a game, interestingly, also has a few other things. One of them is other people, and then because you have other people, you have winners, hopefully you, and losers, hopefully the other people. And then we have work. We, we won't talk about that. So we can sort of, you know, we can put these on a, on a kind of a, a spectrum in terms of the amount of structure that they have. So exploration is a focused investigation. 
and then you have play, which is flexible and it's for its own sake. And then you have a puzzle, which has a goal and rules. And then, like I said, you know, the games have rules and they also have a winner. And then sort of somewhere in there is, is work. And then kind of at the bottom, it doesn't really fit into that, into that hierarchy, but at the bottom we have, we have humor, we have jokes, we have laughter. Which, but with what, what sort of combines all of these things is what psychologists call positive affect. And positive affect is a fancy way of saying it feels good, people look happy when they're doing it. And I mentioned that, that joy and fun are sort of quite closely related, they're probably sort of synonyms. And so there's a whole sort of spectrum of things in here, like you know, fun, happiness, joy, laughter, delight, silliness, jokes, and they're all things that are fun. So that's great, but I still haven't got to programming. Is programming fun? Yeah, programming is incredibly fun because we get to control stuff when we program. It, it really maps quite nicely to a lot of those other things. And this is something that we've known for a long time. Recently, Fred Brooks passed away, which is very sad, but the good thing about that was it really brought a lot of people um, to sort of look back at what he'd done. And I hadn't realized, I sort of knew about the Mythical Man Month in terms of, but I have, I have to say, I have it on my slides, I have not actually read it. <laughs> um, but I hadn't realized until he died that one of the things he also talked in there about is the joy of the craft. And this is quite a long, a long section, but there's a few things that I want to pull out here. One is he talks, basically, you know, his point is programming is fun. And it's fun because making is fun. And it's also fun because being useful is fun. So if we, when we make something and people use it, that's so cool. And then, of course, puzzles are fun. Learning is fun, and basically code is just, you know, <laughs> code does stuff for us, except for when it doesn't work. And so that's, that's really cool. And we, if we go back to those sort of fun activities, we can see they map so nicely to what we do when we program. So exploration, that kind of investigation of something new, is basically exactly what we do when we do hello world in a new language. And of course, puzzles. <laughs> Sometimes the puzzles aren't so fun, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> this is something that we all see all the time. Why isn't it doing what I want? And that can be kind of miserable, but then with this, there's always the moment when you figure it out and you discover what the bug was and you discover, you know, what idiot wrote that API and you've cracked it and you figured out well, how to use it properly and it's such a good feeling. And perhaps not so much with the software itself, but certainly in software as a team sport and in that organization in which we make software, there definitely a lot are many games. Because who among us hasn't tried to game the velocity chart by picking off the easy stories that have an, you, you think were missized? You know, we all try and, and do it. And then, of course, there's the positive affect. So I love this photo. It's a couple of years old now, but this is Katie Bowman when, when she realized that her algorithm for imaging black holes worked. And just that expression of yay on her face is something that you know, I think we've all felt. We all, when it works, it just feels so good. So that's really great. But now we come back to the depressing part. <laughs> which is, if programming is inherently fun and we are all programmers, why aren't we all delighted every single day at work? Well, I think part of it has to do with, you know, some, again, some of the things that, that Mark was talking about and, and some of the things that Romeo was talking about, that we still, in a lot of our organizations, have this management model that was invented in the 80s and the 90s, and it's super hierarchical, and there's a real emphasis on control. And as well, technology in a lot of organizations still isn't seen as a thing that, that drives the business or is a, is a place for creativity. It's seen as an unpleasant and unnecessary cost. And of course, this management model, with the emphasis on hierarchy, itself actually came 
from military models. And a hierarchy, hierarchy is traditionally, an explicit formal hierarchy is traditionally very important in the military because what you do in the military is either kill people or be killed, and both of those are fairly unpleasant, and so you want people to not think too much about what they're doing, you want them to just go and do it. Luckily, hopefully, most of us don't have that, that problem in, in our workplaces, but we still do end up in this situation where it seems like we're just a cog in a machine, and the processes are controlling us instead of the other way around. And it's worse than that as well, actually, because it's not just that the processes are controlling us, it's that they are stupid processes. They are dumb processes. We're being asked to do things that we know are a waste of time, and we hate it. And I think this actually then leads us to, to the answer, which is fun, important in the workplace, is fun, valuable. Actually, yes, it is, and it has to do with that dumbness. Because there is an incredible amount of research that shows fun is, despite those values that say we shouldn't be having fun, fun is good for business. Fun gives individual career success, and it also makes organizations more successful. So we have a, a bunch of papers that show this, and as well, if, if you've read the, the DORA reports, it's right there in the DORA reports. Job satisfaction is the number one predictor of organizational performance. If people are happy, if you make people happy, your business will do well. And again, you know, Fred Brooks said that, that programming was fun, but, but this is something that we've known way before Fred Brooks, actually. We've known it since Aristotle, because Aristotle said pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. If we feel good when we're doing it, if we, if we are happy when we're doing it, the outcome will be, in general, good. And I was thinking about this a while ago because I was, I was doing a project and it was a distributed project and most of the team was in South Africa and we were sort of, I was trying to attend their, you know, stand-ups on, on phone call and the line was terrible and I couldn't hear what was going on in the room. And then my management came back to me and said, you know, so how's the project going? Is it, is it on track? What, what was said on the status call? And I said, to be honest, all I heard was <laughs> But actually what I heard was <laughs> <laughs> and so I was pretty confident that actually the project was in good shape because I knew that if the team were really stressed, if the team were fighting things, and if the team were hating each other and refusing to work together, they wouldn't be laughing together. Because laughter is actually incredibly useful. It, it diffuses tense situations it allows, it sort of builds a team cohesion. And also, just physically, it's actually quite good for you. It's a, <laughs> it's a nice muscle workout, it lowers heart pressure. And again, this is something that we see when we measure it. If employees are having fun, they take less sick leave, they work harder, and they're more productive. So why, why wouldn't you want this? And again, you know, this is right in the, in the Harvard Business Review, that your brain at positive is 31% more productive than your brain at negative, neutral, or stressed. And if you went to your boss and said, hey, I know how to make us 31% more productive, your boss would be like, yes, yes, tell me what it is. But of course, it's not, it's not necessarily that easy. You can't just say, yeah, I'm going to be positive. It's not as getting into a positive mindset isn't as easy as just like watching cat videos on the internet. Except actually, it is literally as easy <laughs> as watching cat videos <laughs> on the internet. Um, there was another study, and they showed people funny videos, and then they had them do a test. And <laughs> people who had watched a comedy video had approximately 12% greater productivity. So this is amazing, because all it means is you need to go watch cat videos at work, and everything will be okay. Uh, 
And I think that you know, there's a few reasons for this, but, but part of it as well is it's well known that play helps creativity, play helps problem solving. And I get so annoyed when, when people you know, in sort of other fields say, ah, yes, I'm creative, you're not. I am creative at my work. My work is very creative, thank you very much. But in fact, it's not just because we're creative that play helps us. You see this in every industry, even, <laughs> even in agriculture, interestingly. Piglets grow faster and therefore are more profitable for the farmer if they play more. This is about as far removed as from software engineering as it's possible to be, and we see the same pattern, that play leads to profit. Now, with the pigs, I, I, I read the paper from this, and it's a little bit unclear which way the cause and correlation goes round. So like, are the piglets growing more because they're playing, or actually are they playing because they're well-fed and, and healthy, and so then that gives them the energy to play? But actually, you know what? It, it doesn't actually matter which way round the correlation is, because either way, what we have is we have this correlation between if people are playing, work is going well. And so when you're, when you're a consultant, when you're a, a contractor, I think there's sometimes this idea that if the person who's paying you sees you just sort of laughing around and joking, they'll be like, hey, I'm not paying you to laugh and joke, I'm paying you to, to work hard. But actually, you should be happy if you see your contractors behaving like that, because it means that the project is going well. It means that they're not stressed. But, of course, there is, there is a limit to that. Um, there is a limit to how much fun you can, you can expect to have. We can't watch cat videos all of the time. Um, many years ago, I was working on a project, and one of the consultants um, programmed all of our tests in Groovy, and he had an awesome time. But then, unfortunately, he left, and the rest of us had to maintain his Groovy tests when we had other deadlines, and we had much less fun. So, you know, we can't watch cat videos all the time. And there are, there are definitely limits. And I think, you know, sometimes you might think, oh, well, if fun has business value, then that means the more fun I have, the better, and I'm only ever going to do things if they're fun. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Of course, in, you know, into every life some rain must fall. There are things that are tedious, like washing the dishes, that we, we do have to do. So it's all about that balance. And as well, having said fun is good, that doesn't mean all fun is good. One of, one of the main motivators for trolls on the internet is that they're having a great time. That doesn't mean it's good. We really need to sort of take that slightly wider step back and think, okay, is, is everyone having fun? Um, so, for example, you know, going back to questions of hierarchy, certainly at the beginning, Elon Musk was having a wonderful time at Twitter. <laughs> he was making lots of jokes. Not everybody saw the funny side. So we really need to think about you know, who we're including and, and who we're excluding. Um, so we do need to be responsible with our fun. But if we're convinced that we should be trying to achieve fun, how, how do we do that? So I used to, when I gave this talk, I used to sort of say that the first thing to do was to find the unfun things. But actually, then people would come up to me and tell me about their workplaces, and I realized that there was another step that we had to do first, which was to stop prohibiting fun, which seems obvious, but I heard a, a tragic story of someone, they had a kitchen, and people would bring in cakes, and then they'd send an email around saying, hey, there's cakes in the kitchen. And HR sent an email saying, you must not send emails saying there is cake in the kitchen. I have no idea why. I, the only reason I can think of is that HR hated people, but it, it, it happened. I, I heard another story. This was many years ago, you know, before we all had, had internet at home, and there was a, a team, and what they would do was a distributed team, and in order to bond with their colleagues, they would play Doom or Quake or something like that, as sort of, you know, ex an extended LAN party after hours. It was after hours, but they were told, if you're in the office after 5.30, you need to be doing work. It's not enough just to be, like, talking to your colleagues. And again, why, 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 why was this done? I have no idea. And I heard another very sad story from someone 
<laughs> they were typing away and they were smiling because the code was going well. And a project manager kind of, you know, came up behind them and said, why are you smiling? Work isn't a place to be happy. Um, this was in Switzerland. I have no idea whether that's correlated or not. <laughs> so now that we've got that out of the way, <laughs> we can work on finding the unfun things and getting rid of them. And this comes back to the fact that we hate it when dumb processes tell us what to do. If a process is unfun, that's such a good red flag that it's not adding value. So th these things are waste. And so if we can move to an, towards a workplace with more autonomy, people are happier and the outcomes are better. So there's a whole bunch of these things that we have in our workplace that we have like meetings and you know process and sizing meetings and status re reporting and we can fix them because for every one of these bad things there is a good thing that we can do instead so we can have automation we can have self-generating status and they really help so for example pair programming you know it has its problems but it is a fabulous alternative to code review. If you have to do one of the two, <laughs> choose pair programming every time because it's so collaborative, it's so nice. Instead of having status meetings, just have self-reporting status. It's so much better. And instead of doing really detailed sizings, unless you have a very good reason why you need them, just skip the estimation stage. Your outcomes will be the same and you will have saved people time and anxiety. And then, of course, with TDD, I'm a huge advocate for TDD. And TDD is partly about the fact that you get better quality and that it's a useful design tool. But I think the biggest benefit of TDD is that it's basically gamified testing. <laughs> that feeling when it goes green is amazing. And then automation as well. When we have processes, so far, Computers don't expect to have fun. At the rate things are going, in two years, they'll probably be the vengeful robots making us really you know, regret that we used them for Terraform. But so far, we're OK. So let the computers do the annoying things. And I, I love the fact that SRE, as a discipline, the sort of the founding principle of SRE is let's stop doing boring stuff because it's annoying, and instead, let's automate it. And with DevOps, a founding principle of DevOps, again, is that we should be trying to make people happier, and that will give a better business result. And this it matters because, again, of, of how we learn. Going back to, to what Simone was talking about, when we learn, having that fast feedback makes us feel good, and it also makes the learning more effective. So once we've done all that, then we can get on to the fun. And this is important, too. So it is so tempting when you're trying to solve a problem <laughs> to just hammer away at it until it's solved. The best debugging tool is a good night's sleep. The second best debugging tool is a game of table tennis. Uh, combining a break with exercise is really effective. And so if we, if we take all these things, then actually we end up in a place where work you know, we have a goal, so work does fit really nicely onto this fun spectrum. Now, sometimes we can take this perhaps a little bit too far, and we can say, I know how to do this. I'm going to move up from the work to the game, and I'm going to gamify everything. And I think gamification really appeals to management because it has rules and a goal, and so it fits well into some of those things. But gamification is actually incredibly effective. We are ridiculously simple creatures in some ways. And just giving a little nudge of gamification can make us completely change what we do. A great example of this is Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow completely changed how help was done on the internet. And the way they did it was by giving a point. And that simple point was enough to make people volunteer so much of their time. And, and I did a great boot camp a while ago where you had to hack the boot camp, and it, it was really fun, and I put so much more effort into it than I would have otherwise. And again, I mentioned TDD is, is gamified testing. I saw an interesting talk about a company, and they had such a huge backlog of technical debt that was showing in SonarCube. And so they couldn't figure out how to, do, to fix it. So what they did was they did a little competition. And 
with that little competition, they got 7,000 new lines of test coverage, and they got 1,000 new tests, and they fixed so many issues. And what had been the incentive? The incentive was pizza. One pizza <laughs> gave all that. Um, but of course, you do have to, with Sonar Cube in particular, you have to think quite carefully about what your metrics are. Otherwise, you drive the wrong behavior because you do get what you measure. And there's there's a really interesting um, project where they've gamified people mapping moon craters to drive a learning algorithm, and they had to take out the gamification because it was driving people to do the wrong thing, even though they were only doing it out of the goodness of their heart to help science. The points would make them mismap to go quicker. And we see this now with Stack Overflow. We, with with ChatGPT, people are trying to get their Stack Overflow points using ChatGPT. Even though it's only a Stack Overflow point, it has no actual value. And of course, employees aren't stupid. They may notice that they're being gamed. So we do have to treat it with caution. Um, but I will say that we are so lucky that we can, we can play in our jobs and that is something that we should be doing, and it does come back to benefit employees. But, of course, we can get it wrong. If we try and be too deliberate about fun, and we say, we're going to have fun as one of our workplace policies, then you end up with team building activities, which everybody hates. You can't just sort of apply a formula to fun and say, fun is valuable, so we are going to measure our fun. Fun isn't a formula. You can't, like, have an office party and then take attendance to make sure people are having fun. It just doesn't work. But fundamentally, the, the worst way to fail at fun is if you forget to fix the other place first. If you put that sort of layer of fun, the ping pong tables and everything, on top of a bad workplace, it will still be a bad workplace. So to wrap up, because I know I'm between you and lunch, which is a terrible place to be, um, fun Fun is really important. Fun just isn't a frill. It's foundational. And the way you get fun is, first of all, get rid of the unfun things. And then once you've sorted that out, you can add the fun things. That's the order in which to do it. And with that, th those are the slides. Thank you very much. <laughs>